In this video, I'm going to show you how to test your Android projects on a real Android device. And I'm also going to show you how to create a virtual device with Android Studio and emulate the Android operating system on your computer. That way, if you don't own an Android phone, you can still test your apps. Before I start, I just want to say that the recommended way, the way that I use typically, actually it's the way that I always use, is using a real device. Using the Android emulator is very, very slow. And I have a very fast computer. So on a slow computer, it's really, really terrible to do. But on a real device, it's going to be very fast. It depends on your device, but it's going to be very, very fast compared to the emulator on your computer. So I'm going to start by first showing you what I use to mirror my device on the screen. So this app right here is what is mirroring my device on the screen. And then I'm going to show you how to enable developer mode on a real device so that you can you can run apps on it. So this app that I'm running my phone on, my phone is connected to the computer. It's uh, known as Visor. You can get Visor just by Googling Visor, going to their website, visor.io, and clicking download. It's also a Google Chrome extension. So if I go to apps and uh, you can search the, the web store for Visor. So if I just search for Visor, there's that right now. You can add it to Chrome and that's how you mirror your phone. When you run the Visor app, it looks like this. I can't shrink the window, but when you plug in the device, you can see there's my device. All I need to do is click view and it will open the device on the screen just like that. So now you know that how I mirror my device on the screen. So now how do you enable something called developer mode on your phone. What When you enable developer mode, what it does is when I click this play button up here, it will allow Android Studio to detect your device and run apps on it. If I don't have developer mode enabled on my phone, this will not show up and you can't run apps on your phone. So how do I do that? Let's take a look. I need to go on my phone and I need to go to the settings section. Actually, I should say before I start doing this, every phone is a little different when it comes to enabling developer mode. The safest way to do this is probably to actually just go to Google and Google whatever your phone is. In my case, it's a OnePlus 5 and type enable developer mode. That, that would be the best way to do it. But um, in this video, I'll still show you how to do it on my phone. But if, you, if it's not the same, just Google your phone, enable developer mode, and it will show you how to do that. So I'm going to click on settings here and go down to the very bottom, click on about phone. And there should be uh, an option that says build number. So this setting screen might look a little different depending on what phone you're using. But uh, what you want to look for is this build number thing. So if I click this, notice it said no need, you are already a developer. If this phone does not have developer mode enabled, it will show you a toast, a little message that says uh, seven more clicks until you're a developer. If you click it again, it will say six more clicks until you're a developer. And so you just keep clicking that until it says that you're a developer. Once you have developer mode enabled, you're going to have some other settings that are available on your phone that weren't there before. So there's going to be some, some hidden settings that weren't available that are now available. I, I believe mine are in the system. Yeah, so you go to system and then you go to developer options right here. This is this is what you're looking for. This would not have shown up if you didn't have developer mode enabled. So I'm going into developer options. The things that I want to enable are OEM unlocking and also USB debugging right here. You need to make sure that those are enabled. And once you have those enabled, you should be good to go. You should be able to run apps on your phone. So if you click the play button right here after you've plugged in your device, just uh, click your connected device, which is this one and click OK. And then the app will run on your phone. So if I was to pull up Visor, there you can see the app is now running on my phone. There's nothing here, of course, because the app is pretty much completely empty, but it is running on the phone. So now, what do you do if you don't have an Android device, or maybe you don't have a very good Android device, and you want to use the Android emulator? So if I click the play button, uh, these are the virtual devices that I've already created. If, uh, if you're new to developing with Android Studio, you're not going to see anything here. This is going to be a, just a big empty space. So in that case, what you need to do is go down to create new virtual device. And this is where you select what kind of phone you want it to be, what you want the SDK version to be. Basically, you're setting the properties for that virtual device. I don't really care. I'm just going to select anything. Sure, a, a pixel is fine. And I want to go to next. And then I need to select the version that I want installed on that phone. I just have Android Oreo installed here, so that's the only option that I have available. But you can choose anything. You can download any of these versions, and then you can choose those as the SDK version that you want installed on that phone. 
Also keep in mind that these are just the recommended system images. You can choose the 86-bit images or you can choose other images for like really old versions if you want. So you can see this goes down to the like the almost the very first version of Android. You could technically download the fourth API level. You can download any of these API levels and install them on a device. Although as you can see over here, it's not recommended. So what I'm going to do is select the Oreo since that's the one that I have installed. Go next. And now I can choose some more properties for this virtual device. I can give it a different name. So I can say, uh, sure, Pixel XL API 27. Uh, this is a test. Whatever you want. Any description here is fine. But uh, it's good to use the, the phone and the API level because that's pretty much all you need to know about what you're testing on. So definitely I recommend keeping whatever the default description is here. You can choose, uh, this is where you choose the SDK version, the size, uh, startup orientation, so just whatever orientation it starts when you run it, uh, emulated performance, I recommend just using automatic, and then you can show some advanced settings down here. So the only one that I really recommend using, or the ones that I recommend changing, are if you can spare it, use more RAM. So if you have a lot more RAM, uh, put it put in whatever you can handle here if you're going to use the emulator because it, it is very demanding on your computer. The more RAM you can give it, the faster it's going to be. So that's that's what I recommend doing. Uh, let's see, the storage, so what amount of storage you want on the phone. And a very important one is to enable the keyboard. If you click this, you can use your, your computer's keyboard to type on the device. If you don't enable this, you're going to have to click them with the mouse, which is very annoying. So make sure you click that. I recommend that. But uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to click Finish, and Android Studio will add my virtual device. So there's the one right there, Pixel XL API 27. This is a test. Now I can click this, and Android Studio is going to launch the emulator. You can see it launching here, and uh, it's going to run that app. So it doesn't quite fit in the whole screen. And uh, it's going to take a long time to start up, so I'm probably not going to wait. But that's basically it. That's all you need to know to run devices using the emulator. Actually, I lied. That's probably not everything you need to know. Because uh, I made a video just before this one talking about the SDK version and the tools and all that stuff. To run the emulator, there is certain SDK tools that you need to have installed. So go to Tools, go to SDK Manager, go to SDK Tools, and you need to make sure that you have the Intel 86 Emulator Accelerator installed. Uh, and let's see, what else do you need? I believe that's actually it. But to be safe, you can click everything that I have installed and you'll know it'll work. I'm pretty sure that that's the only thing you take. Oh, maybe Google USB driver. But, uh, oh, Android emulator. That's the one I was looking for. So Android emulator, Intel 86 emulator accelerator, possibly Google USB driver. Those are the ones that you're going to want to have installed on your computer. So just click them, click apply, and it will get installed. Now that should be everything you need to use the Android emulator.